In this Patter tutorial, we're going to look at one of the ways that the Patter family of objects provides for access and modifying information in the Max Patching environment, Preset Morphing. We're going to start with a Max Patch that produces a pair of pitch test tones in the left and right channels. The patch has already been patterized using the usual trio of Patter objects. Patter objects to expose the parts of our patch whose state we want to save, a patter storage object to store and access patcher data, and a preset object to allow us to save and recall presets using the mouse. In addition to using the preset object, we'll add a floating point number box to our patch to recall a preset. Let's take a quick look at the first two presets in our patch by typing the values 1 and 2 into the floating point number box. Notice the position of the two frequency sliders when we recall those two presets. Now, enter the number 1 into the floating point number box and then click and drag to send floating point values between 1 and 2 to the patter storage object and watch what happens. As the number value changes, the patterized parameter objects are displaying values we didn't store at all values that smoothly transition between the positions of the sliders for presets 1 and 2. By clicking and dragging, we can perform the same kind of linear interpolation between every pair of adjacent integer numbered presets by sending values between 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 3 and 4, and so on. Another way of recalling presets is by means of the recall message. Sending a message composed of the word recall, followed by an integer that specifies a numbered preset, recalls that preset, just as if we'd sent an integer value. But the recall message lets us do far more interesting things by adding additional arguments to the message. We can selectively recall preset data associated with a single parameter instead of recalling the entire preset. For example, I can recall the parameter setting of the freq1 parameter for preset1 without affecting any other part of my current preset by sending the message recall freq1 1.0. The recall message also lets us interpolate values between any two presets even if they're not consecutive numbers. We can do this by sending the message recall followed by two integers that specify preset numbers and a number between 0 and 1. The floating point value specifies the amount of interpolation between the two sets of parameter values. For our final trick, it shouldn't be hard to imagine what the message recall freq1 35.5 does. It will recall an interpolated data value exactly halfway between the settings for presets 3 and 5. Progress does not always run in a straight line, however, and the same is true for pattern objects. Linear interpolation is the default setting. It's what we've been seeing so far, the weighted linear change in parameter values as we move from one preset to another. One alternative to simple linear mapping is exponential mapping. When we use the pop-up menu to set the interpolation mode to exponential, you'll notice that a value of 0 appears in the column to the right of the interp column in the client window. This column can be used to set the exponent to which the interpolation amount will be raised when the data is recalled. Here's an example. In our patch, presets 6 and 7 have the same values for both of the frequency parameters. We'll set both the freq1 and freq2 parameters to use this exponential mapping, but we'll give them different power values, a value of less than 1 for freq1 and a value greater than 1 for freq2. Watch the difference in the way that the parameter values change when interpolating between presets 6 and 7. As you can see, different exponential values can be used to create faster or slower preset interpolation. 
The table interpolation mode is probably the most interesting and exotic of all. It lets us define an arbitrary nonlinear mapping function that we can use when morphing between presets by using the max table object. Add a table object to your patch and type in an argument that specifies the name of your table. We'll use my function here. Now, we'll set up our table to work with the pattern storage object. When we use lookup tables for preset interpolation, we'd like to set the table so as to have values in the range of 0 to 100. Since we need values in the range of 0 to 100, our size and range should be set to 101. To create a mapping function, double-click on the table object to open its edit window and click and drag to draw an arbitrary function. Now we'll use the client window to set the interpolation mode for a parameter. For each parameter you want to use your mapping function on, choose table from the pop-up menu in the interp column. To specify the table object you want to use, double-click in the column to the right of the interp column and type in the name of the table you want to use for your mapping function. In this case, it's my function. That's it. The function in the table will now be used when interpolating between any two presets parameter values. To change the mapping function, just draw a new function in the table. The ability to interpolate between stored preset states in your max patch gives you a nearly unlimited range of options for fun and mayhem. Happy patching!